All right, in this, we are going to talk about the software configuration management process, right? Continuing with the lecture, uh, this is going to take us with the point that we already know what is SCM, why we are doing it, what is the importance. So now we are going to understand the software configuration management process. So this is the process. Basically, this process I have already told you in a simple form in the earlier, uh, you know, topic. So what it is, it is going to have a cycle in which we have these particular phases. First one is identification. So what identification? Because SCM is all talking about the change or the modification. So what we are going to work on with, we are going to work on with the change. So identification of change and SCIs, right? Why SCI is because change are to be done into a single module or into a computer program or into a specific document. So that is going to be defined as SCI. So what we are going to identify, we are going to identify the SCIs or the changes. Then we are going to work with the version control, then the change control, then the auditing will be done, configuration auditing. That means whether it is implemented properly or not. And lastly, the reporting of all the changes will be done. So this is the cycle in which we have how many? Five phases, identification, control, uh, version control, change control, configuration audit, and lastly, the reporting. So let's see one by one. First of all, SEM process. Now I'm talking about the objective of this process. Right, so primary objective of this SCM process is what? To identify all items that collectively define the software configuration, right? I'm going to identify all the items which are collectively going to define the software configuration. Second, I'm going to manage the change to one or more of these items, whichever item is needed to be changed. I'm going to talk about that. Then I'm going to facilitate the construction of different versions of an application. So whatever the change is going to be done in a specific SCI, that particular will be constructed with the different versions. So that particular facilitation will be done with the help of this process. And lastly, we are going to ensure that software quality is being maintained as the configuration evolve, evolves over time. So these are the main points as the primary objectives of the SCM, right? Here you can see this particular as evolving of software configuration management. These are the SCIs. I told you this can be the computer programs. It can be the modules. It can be single programs. It can be documents. It can be anything, right? Then the first process, identification, change control, version control, configuration auditing, and reporting. Moving further, talking about the first point, that is the identification of objects. Now here, we are going to control and manage the SCIs. As I have already told you, what is SCI? It is configuration items, that is software configuration items, right? Each should be separately named and then organized as an object-oriented approach. Now what we are doing here is, we are considering, let's say, if a particular module needs to be changed, then it is termed to be as an individual SCI, right? And we are going to use the approach of OOP, that is object-oriented approach we are going to use. So I am going to consider this particular separately as one object, and I'll name this particular object, right? I'll provide a name with the, as the object. Now there are two types of objects we are working with. One is the basic object, and second one is the aggregate object. The only... Um, concept of basic and aggregate objective object is basic object is the unit of information that is created during analysis design or code or test that means i'm talking about the single or the individual object that is not a collective object right so that particular defines the basic object example if i need to uh, have a you know, if I have a source code and in that particular part of source code, I need to do certain changes. So that is what the basic objective is. When I talk about the aggregate objects, aggregate object, I mean to say the collection of basic objects. Let's say the same type of objects when collected together are going to be termed as aggregate objects. And these are example of design specifications. So this is what we are going to do as identification of objects. And in some 
you know uh, books you can also see that this is identification of sci so it is one and the same thing next one is version control so just see version control means what uh, you all must be aware, aware of version version control what we are doing here is we are combining the procedure and tools for what to manage the versions of configuration objects which are created during the software process right so basic agenda of version control is to combine the procedure and to manage the versions which are being created a new version is defined when major changes have been done or made to one or more objects see if there is a change or change in one code line let's say this is the change then this is provided as v1.0 now if minor changes are being done then we are going to say call it as v1.1 with other minor changes v1.2 right let's say if there is a major change in this particular then we are going to give a new version to this that is v2.0 and so on and so forth so this is called as version control by providing the new version when major changes are being done right next point is called as the change control now change control is what these are the activities which are going to ensure the quality and consistency of changes which are made in the configuration object that means as we have seen the scm is an umbrella activity so this is the part which is forming for the quality that means here we are going to ensure the quality that no side effects are being present due to the changes in a single configuration object due to the change in this particular object there should be no performance issues or errors are entering in the other module it begins with a change request leads to a decision or to make a request reject or accept it so how it starts first of all the request is initiated for change then the decision is taking place whether we need to reject or accept the request and this is acceptance or rejection is being done on the basis of the analysis whether the change in a object is going to impact more or with less effect to the other objects right now next one is configuration audit now we all know audit means what we are going to check the quality right so audit is uh, we are going to ensure whether the implementation has been done properly or not so configuration audit is what to ensure that changes has been properly implemented now this is done with the two techniques that is called as ftr we have already studied this that is formal technical review and second one as software configuration audit sca so in formal technical review i am not working it in detail what it is this particular is going to talk about the software quality assurance activity that means all the software quality assurance activities should be performed by the software engineers that means we are talking about the software planning software quality planning software assurance software quality control and total quality management all these should be included that means plan control quality inspection and lastly the tqm that is total quality management all these sqa activities should be performed these should be ensured by the software engineers right and others who are involved in the team ftr serves as a training ground enabling junior engineers to observe different approaches to software analysis design and implementation now here what it is uh, ftr is also working as a training ground because when we are having a formal technical review it is a formal approach where the person who is going to you know present the code or present the module he is going to uh, you know analyze each and everything and will talk about all the issues which are being configured in the uh, uh, project so the analysis is being done here 
on the basis of design implementation and all and that will be more helpful for the junior engineers also so it is just a training ground for junior engineers they are going to understand all these particular concepts second one is called as the software configuration audit again sq activity are involved in this all the sq activities and here it is going to help us to ensure that quality is made maintain as changes are made so overall we are ensuring that changes has been properly implemented with consistency i'm again using the word with consistency and the quality right with consistency and quality now last thing that we need to do is what that is called as the status reporting configuration status reporting is what status reporting is also called as status accounting it is a task of scm that answers the following questions basically it is just a report which is provided at the end of the configuration all the phases when done properly a report is being prepared and it is being presented to the person now what it involves it involves all the answers to these particular questions that means what happened what happened means what changes were made when did it happen so when the changes were made who did it who were involved in all the changes and what else will be affected that means after the changes has been implemented what all can be affected due to this particular change that is a very important question so you can see all these are what these are the software configuration task you also call it as software configuration activities or tasks so if anyone asks you what are the tasks or what are the scm process or what are the scm phases or what are the scm activities all those have the similar answer that is identification version control sorry identification version control configuration audit and reporting all these are what these are the software configuration management tasks and software configuration management activities right 